हेलो एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू के पी आई एस डेलीज कैफ इनिशिएटिव करंट अफेयर्स थ्रू रिवर्स इंजीनियरिंग दीज आर दर्टिकल्स दैट विल बी सीन टूडे एम पी एस एंड एम एल एज आर नो लॉन्गर एग्जैम्प फ्रॉम लीगल एक्शन फॉर टेकिंग ब्राइब्स फॉर स्पीच और वोटिंग इन द हाउस से सुप्रीम कोर्ट the context is given in the question so the supreme court seven judge constitutional bench headed by chief justice dy chandrachud has ruled that mps and mlas will no longer be exempted from legal action for taking bribes for speeches or votes in the legislature all right this is so this looks like a very obvious thing but you need to know that previously in the year 1998 there was a case called jmm bribery case and in this case the court decided that the mlas and M- mps will be exempted from legal action for taking bribes for giving speeches or voting in the legislature now with this judgment the supreme court has overruled the 1998 judgment all right so in 1998 jmm case the supreme court exempted mps and mlas all right now the exemption is removed and the supreme court said that bribery is not exempted under the constitutional articles because it destroys integrity in public life and it also has significant impact on morality of politics okay so this is the context and this is some information in the year 2023 that is exactly after 25 years of this judgment the center told the seven bench a uh, seven judge bench that the majority verdict in the infamous jmm bribery case was wrong the center also opined that the judgment was wrong because lawmaker that is mp or mla commits a crime the moment he accepts the pay off whether or not he makes good his promise in the house that means see as and when the lawmaker that is mp or mla is taking the bribe he is committing a crime for what reason he is taking and what is the purpose whether he is doing that act or not is immaterial that is secondary but uh, the first thing that is to be checked is this one whether he is accepting the bribe or not the moment he accepts the bribe it is a crime all right and you should also know that a claim of immunity should fulfill two fold test what are, what is that that particular immunity should aid in collective functioning of the house and second one it is necessary for the mla or mp to discharge the essential duties only then the immunity can can be granted okay in the jmm case which i referred it is also known as pv narsimha rao versus cbi case it said that the mps are protected under article 105 clause 2 and the mlas are protected under article 194 clause 2 what is article 105 clause 2 it gives certain immunity to the mps what does it say no member of parliament shall be liable to any proceedings in any court in respect of anything said or voted in the parliament okay but if he is taking bribe to do the same thing then from now on it is considered to be a crime all right the same thing holds with mlas all right so these are the articles that you should remember consider the following statements the supreme court recently held that accepting bribes in exchange for voting is shielded under the doctrine of parliamentary privilege absolutely not so this is wrong member of parliament enjoy parliamentary privileges under articles 194 of the indian constitution this is also wrong why is it wrong because the article is wrong it is 105 article 105 for mps and for mlas it is 194 all right so which of the above statements is are incorrect c is the answer both the statements are incorrect now upsc pyq consider the following statements statement 1 the supreme court of india has held in some judgments that reservation policies made under article 16 clause 4 of the constitution of india would be limited by article 335 for maintenance of efficiency of administration first of all you need to know what article 16 clause 4 is and what is article 335 article 16 clause 4 allows the state 
to make special provisions for the reservation of appointments or posts in favor of any backward class of citizens which in the opinion of state are not adequately represented in the services under the state all right and article 335 talks about the claims of the members of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes to the services and posts to be taken into consideration consistently with the maintenance of efficiency of administration all right so in many judgments supreme court said that article 16 clause 4 of the constitution of india is not absolute and need to be balanced with article 335 so statement 1 is correct now statement 2 article 335 of the constitution of india defines the term efficiency of administration absolutely not what does it say 335 deals with this particular thing right i already mentioned so statement 1 is correct 2 is wrong so let us come to the options which of the following is correct in respect of the above statements both statement 1 and 2 are correct no both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct no statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect c is the answer e kesan upaj nidhi launched what is upaj upaj means yield it's a hindi word and it means yield and what is nidhi it is not name of a girl it, nidhi in hindi means fund all right so this was launched that is the context now we'll come to the details of this e kisan upachnidhi what is it this one is a online platform and this e kisan upachnidhi provides farmers kisan means farmers right farmers an online platform to obtain post harvest loans from banks from banks by pledging their e n w r s what is this e n w r s electronic negotiable warehouse receipts okay so e kisan upaj nidhi provides the farmers an online platform to obtain post harvest loans from banks by pledging their e n w r s that is electronic negotiable warehouse receipts for stocks for stocks kept in wdra registered warehouse now what is this wdra warehouse development regulatory authority so this is the function of e kisan upaj nidhi and uh, who are all involved in this one e kisan upaj nidhi it is a joint endeavor of department of food and public distribution next is wdra which i mentioned here third is department of financial services fourth is nabard all right so this gateway will improve ease of obtaining pledge finance by farmers against their stocks and one more fact was given in pib that the procurement government's procurement through msps has increased by 2.5 times over the last decade so this is important fact that you have to remember for prelims consider the following statements with regards to e kisan upaj nidhi initiative this initiative was was launched by ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare recently no i mentioned that it is a joint initiative of department of food and public distribution system not system a uh, department of food and public distribution okay wdra department of financial services and nabard not ministry of agriculture please remember people who haven't followed care would mark it as ministry of agriculture but since you're listening to this video please make a note of this okay so this is wrong the initiative would benefit farmers in india by simplifying warehousing logistics this is correct right so which one of the following statements is are correct it's b what is the primary objective of the e jagruti portal recently seen in news see this is a upsc pyq so please be thorough with initiatives like e kisan upaj nidhi etc all right to offer financial assistance to small businesses no to promote awareness about climate change no to facilitate consumer dispute re redress this is correct this was a news because the consumer affairs secretary advocated the infusion of artificial intelligence into the e jagruti portal 
The portal is under the aegis of Department of Consumer Affairs and it is actually streamlining consumer dispute redressal through features like online case filing, AI-driven smart search, etc. All right, so C is the answer. France, the first country to have a constitutional right to abortion. In France, there was legal right to abortion since 1974. There was legal right. However, the constitutional right was given recently. So the abortion in France can take, take place up to 14 weeks after conception. 14 weeks. And this is in line with the slogan of my body My choice. This slogan is pretty famous in the internet these days, right? Okay. And fourth, you have to remember that Article 34 of the French Constitution says that the law determines the conditions in which a woman has the guaranteed freedom to have recourse to an abortion. What is the scene in the other parts of the uh, other parts of the world? In the U.S., there was a case called Roe versus Wade. In 1973 and the court ruled that the Constitution of United States generally protected the right to have an abortion however this one was overruled the Supreme Court overturned this decision allowing states to potentially outlaw abortions in the US this is in US not in India what is the scene in India India's laws in now if you see India's scenario in India, Section 312 of the Indian Penal Code, 1860, criminalizes voluntarily causing miscarriage. This is the first thing. The second thing, in 1971, Medical Termination of Preg Pregnancy Act was introduced to liberalize access to safe abortions. Alright, so if we take 12 weeks after conception, 20 and 24 for pregnancies up to 12 weeks, one doctor's opinion was required and abortion was allowed. From 12 to 20 weeks, previously, two doctors' opinion was required for abortion. All right, but it was amended in the year 2021 and it said only one doctor's opinion was fine for the abortion. Also, there, there's a condition to abort the fetus from this 12 to 20 weeks. What is that? The doctor must determine if the continuance of the pregnancy poses a risk to women's life or physical or mental health. And if only there is substantial risk to physical or mental health of the mother or there are mental uh, abnormalities in the child, only then abortion will be allowed. And from 20 to 24 weeks, st uh, still two doctors' opinion is required. However, there is a loophole in this law because this law recognizes changes in relationship status due to divorce or widowhood, but it does not specify, specifically address the situation for unmarried women. Okay, this is an area where the law may be um, further need to be clarified. See, there is another debate, rights versus ethics. Okay. This is for your deeper understanding and out of my own interest, I'm telling you this one. See, rights versus ethics, it is useful for your mains. Okay, see, rights, people they, who support rights and people who support the other way. Rights of mother or women or rights of fetus. Okay, so this is the debate. People who are supporting rights of women, they say that women has a right to choose and forcing a woman to carry a pregnancy is against her bodily autonomy. Okay, this is one. They also contend that during the early stages of pregnancy, the fetus is not yet a live human being. So what rights are you talking about? The rights of, the rights of fetus do not even exist because it is not yet a live human being. Okay, that is one argument. And this also say uh, this these people also argue that the importance of women's right to make decisions about her own body is primarily very very important. Okay. On the other hand, these people who actually uh, 
talk about right of fetus, they say that pro-life movement need to be supported and they argue that the fetus has a right to life that and that it has to be protected and abortion violates principles of harm or harm principle what does this harm principle refer to it it says that no one should inflict serious harm on others so they say that abortion goes against this principle and they also say that Abortion or terminating a pregnancy constitutes a violation of the principle of mens rea. Principle of mens rea. What is this? It considers the intention of the agent. See, the intention is to kill the fetus and that is very, very wrong. So, these are the arguments on part of people supporting right to life of fetus and right to um, bodily autonomy of women and here you should also understand that there is a term called antinatalism what is this antinatalism antinatalism is a movement which actually emphasizes on this stop making babies they are against stop making babies they are against procreation all right so these are some basics Consider the following. Recently, France has given abortion status uh, a constitutional right. Yes, this is correct. Section 312 of the Indian Penal Code, 1860, allows voluntary uh, abortion in India. No, it criminalizes voluntary, uh, voluntarily causing miscarriage. Right? So, this is also wrong. Which of the above statements? These are correct. So, 2 is wrong, which means B is gone. 1 is correct. D is also gone. Abortion was made unconstitutional in India through the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act in 1971. See, this, as I mentioned, Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act of 1971 actually was introduced to liberalize the access to safe abortion, right? So, this is also wrong. A is the answer. Two of the schemes launched by Government of India for women's development are Swadhar and Swayam Siddha. As regards the difference between them, Consider the following statements. So, let me tell you that Swayam Siddha was for the holistic development of women, whereas Swadhar was, it's a scheme designed to uplift those who are unfortunate in unfortunate circumstances like natural disasters or terrorism survivors or women released from jails and mentally affected women. All right, now come to the options. Swayam Siddha is meant for those in difficult circumstances such as women survivors. No, Swayam Siddha is for holistic development, right? So, this is wrong. First statement is gone. Which of the above statements are correct? So, A is gone. Swayam Siddha is implemented through local self body, government bodies or reputed voluntary organizations, whereas Swadhar is implemented through ICDS. Swadhar is not implemented through ICDS. It is implemented through Ministry of Women and child development and social justice and empowerment. So, Ministry of Women and Child Development and Ministry of Social Justice, not ICDS. So, this is also wrong. D is the answer. Russia-North Korea relationship. So, Russia's President Vladimir Putin is expected to visit North Korea again in 2024 with preparations underway for a summit between the two leaders. Okay, and why are these two countries deepening the relationships? It's because in 2022, North Korea supported Russia's invasion of Ukraine. All right, so if you look at the history of their relationship in 1948, the Soviet Union recognizes North Korea as the sole legitimate authority in the Korea. Okay, in 1945, what happened between 1945 to 1948? Japan's colonial rule of the Korean Peninsula ends with Tokyo's World War II defeat in 1945, but the peninsula is eventually divided into Soviet-backed North Korea and US-backed South Korea, right? In 2000, this, this one is important because Russia actually supported UN sanctions against North Korea over its nuclear weapons and missiles program. And Russia also participated in talks to persuade North Korea to abandon its atomic program. So, this one stands as a highlight because this is the only time when North Korea actually supported something against, I mean, Russia supported something against North Korea. In 2022, as you all know, 
and as I mentioned, North Korea supported Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And in July 2023, the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un welcomes Russian delegation to North Korea. And uh, uh, they actually celebrated the 70th anniversary or anniversary of the Korean War Armistice Agreement. And because the, in 2022, North Korea actually supported Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Russia reciprocated the same favor by opposing new sanctions on North Korea. All right, so these are some basics and you need to understand that uh, what is India and Russia? You need to understand that there's something called Far East. What is Far East? See, if you take this as the here you have India. So this is Russia. Okay. Far East refers to this region. Mongolia, China, North Korea, Japan and the United States. All right. So Mongolia, China, North Korea, Japan and US. These are the five countries. Also, there are two oceans that are involved. One is the Arctic and other is the Pacific. Why is it important? Because it is a hub of natural resources. And from this area, 95% of the Russian diamonds are taken. Tungsten, borax, gold, all of them are present here. All right. And in 2019, India announced a commitment to act Far East. You know about Act East policy. In 2019, India has come up with Act Far East policy to deepen the ties with Russia. Consider the following statements. India's Act Far East policy aims to promote cultural exchange with African countries. No, we've just seen, right? It is not about African countries. The Russian Far East borders China, Japan, North Korea and South Korea. No, it's not South Korea. It is only China, Japan, North Korea is there. South Korea is not there. Mongolia is there and US is there. Okay. So these both are wrong which means d is the answer now what is terminal high altitude area defense thought sometimes seen in news it is an american anti-missile system israeli radar system is known as iron dome okay and india's indigenous anti-missile program is pad or prithvi air defense okay so, um, it is also known as Pradyumna Ballistic Missile Interceptor. Okay. China to provide military assistance to Maldives. So, what is the context? Actually, uh, Maldives has been experiencing strained relations with India since President Mohammed Moiso came to power in November last year. Right. And after that, we also saw that uh, Maldives tourism versus Lakshadweep tourism. You know, there was a tussle. So, Moizu actually has set a deadline of March 10th for the withdrawal of the first group of Indian military personnel from Maldives. And China is actually trying to get closer to Maldives and fill in this vacuum. That is the context and background. All right. All right. Now, you need to know about string of pearls. What is string of pearls? String of pearls is a geopolitical theory that describes China's efforts to develop and expand it, its ports and naval bases in the Indian Ocean region. Okay, this theory suggests that China is seeking to establish a series of strategic naval bases and commercial ports along the Indian Ocean region to encircle India and threaten its trade power projection and territorial integrity. Okay, and what is India doing to counter this? You have to know about necklace of diamond strategy. What is this necklace of diamond strategy? It is, it is India's response to China's string of pearls and it emphasizes the encirclement of China by enhancing its naval presence expanding its military bases and strengthening diplomatic ties with regional nations. See here, there is India. So, Diamond of Pearls is 
you know the points in diamond of pearls are mongolia then japan then vietnam you have changi in singapore sabang in indonesia then assumption in seychelles island you know it's far off yeah and you have oman then iran and mongolia okay so this is necklace of diamonds Consider the following statements the string of pearls is a geopolitical theory that describes us efforts to develop and expand its ports and naval bases in indian ocean region it is not us it is china so this is wrong to counter string of pearls india has made strategic agreements for military cooperation in the region this is correct which of the above statements is are correct second one is right now consider the following statements israel has established diplomatic relations with some arab states yes this is correct in 1979 there was camp david accord and it led to diplomatic relations and normalization of ties between israel and egypt and another country that has established diplomatic relations with israel is jordan and in 2020 united arab emirates and bahrain signed agreements with israel to establish full diplomatic relations known as abraham accords The Arab Peace Initiative, mediated by Saudi Arabia, was signed by Israel and Arab League. See, it was mediated by Saudi Arabia, but it was not signed by Israel. So, second statement is wrong. Okay, so statement one is correct, but statement two is incorrect. C is the answer. GI tag for Narsapur crochet. Yesterday, we have seen some basics about GI tags and other goods which actually. we recorded the gi status so please visit that video and for the basics part and get some insights now we'll see some basics about narsapur crochet so narsapur crochet is a lace craft all right and uh, this gi tag was given for uh, this narsapur is in the godavari region of andhra pradesh all right Narsapur and Palakulu serve as the major trade points of four lace products in West Godavari. While Amrapur, Amalapuram in Konsima is also a hub for this crochet craft. Which of the following pairs are not correctly matched? Narsapur crochet Gujarat no it is Andhra Pradesh. Sundarban honey Arunachal Pradesh no it's West Bengal Ramban anardana Jammu Kashmir this is correct okay so they are asking you which of the following pairs are not correctly matched that is 1 and 2 okay which of the following has have been accorded geographical indication status Banaras brocades and sarees yes select the correct answer so when one is there b is gone rajasthani dalbati churma if you do not know just come to the next option tirupati laddu yes so a is gone now you will have to know for sure because in these both you have to choose one right so rajasthani dalbati churma no it wasn't given the gi tag so it is 1 and 3 lahore resolution Now, why is this in news? Because Pakistan National Day, which is observed on March twenty third, the day the Lahore Resolution was adopted in nineteen forty, ah, this day, India plans to celebrate this Pakistan National Day in March twenty twenty four at Pakistan's embassy complex in New Delhi. So that is the context. All right. Now we have to know what. This is the static part, and we need to know what Lahore Resolution is. The Lahore Resolution was adopted by the All India Muslim League, and it was presented by Fazlul Haq. And it formally called for an independent state for India's Muslims. The resolution does not include the word Pakistan. That you have to remember. The word Pakistan is not. present anywhere in the resolution but some have even debated if it's if the text calls for one separate nation or two but pakistan celebrates it as a national day and 
in the year 1956 on same date that is March 23rd the first constitution of Pakistan was adopted all right so they also celebrate it as Pakistan Resolution Day or Republic Day consider the following statements with reference to Lahore Resolution the Ra Lahore Resolution later known as the Pakistan Resolution was introduced in 1940 this is correct Drafted by Sikandar Hayat Khan, it was presented by Fazlul Haq on March 23, 1940. This is also correct. It was a collaborative effort of 25 members of the All India Muslim League Working Committee. This is also right. Which of the above statements is are correct? So, D is the answer. Okay. Now, with reference to the 8th August 1942 Indian history, which one of the following statements is correct? The Quit India Resolution was adopted by all India Congress Committee, this is correct, right? August 8th, Gowalia Tank, Quit India Resolution, you know, this is the Mahatma Gandhiji launched this Quit India Movement from Mumbai's Gowalia Tank. So, A is the answer. This is it for today. All the best.